Uh, girls, I'm just going to take you through just a couple of uh, quick scenarios and, and uh, case studies that we've done with a few of our migrations for our customers. Uh, we work with a number of different customers, different size, different industries. Um, I'm going to just focus on the email migration just for this purpose because it's, it's more common that that's the first step that people migrate into the cloud. Uh, and it's also has more, more common uh, things between companies. When we start talking about um, SharePoint or, or things like that, because of the customizations you can make to SharePoint, uh, it can be quite complex, so that can, that's probably a better discussion you know, looking at your specific um, uh, requirements for that. Um, going through this, the, the key thing to get out of it is that there are quite a lot of considerations when you are moving in Office 365. Uh, it doesn't mean that it needs to be uh, a difficult process. It can be a very smooth migration process, but there are things you need to think about, uh, and really, as with any IT project, it makes but all the money more smoother if you, if you plan for it, um, uh, plan for it well. Uh, so with the with the email migration, there are many different technical ways to, to move mail and calendars and all that sort of things. Uh, what I'm going to focus on today, though, is some uh, business level um, ways to migrate. That is the cutover method, which is where you have an existing email server and you move completely to that and then you start using cloud products and then you decommission the old email server. The other way is to do a hybrid model, is where you have your existing uh, on-premise servers or other email servers and you want to integrate them with, with the cloud and you want to be able to, uh, to use both those systems. And there are pros and cons to, to both of them, which hopefully I'll be able to go over when we, um, when we go through that. So just using a scenario here with a small and medium business in the healthcare industry, um, you will notice that they, uh, I've just got over here all, all the different, um, sort of different products that they were, were potentially using. Um, so some of the reasons for them to migrate were around an aging or unreliable server. So the server's getting old, uh, it's becoming unreliable, emails are going offline and uh, it's causing you know, productivity issues with them. Uh, by moving the emails to 365, you've got cloud um, storage, you've got high availability, so they're making sure that they could uh, access their emails at, uh, at all times. Next one was around mobility. They had staff that had to work outside of the office, so they needed access to emails and files, and obviously using, using cloud to uh, allow them to do that. Uh, another common scenario that they faced was the Microsoft Office versions. So they had some users who are using 2007, some using 2010, some using 2013. And there are compatible issues there you know, between the versions um, and you know, not only internally but with their customers. So they wanted to be able to standardise that. And a lot of the time that for a small business that's you know, potentially a bit like cost to standardise um, across, across the board. So with 365, providing the um, you know, a version that they can store five devices per user, they are able to standardise all of their um, uh, office installations. And the next was archiving. So uh, as was, which is quite common, users were using PST files, which are hard to, hard to manage, and you're going to use on whatever machine that PST is actually sitting on. Um, uh, and the key benefit to get out of Office 365 was that it was a 50 gig mailbox, so a lot of the time they didn't need to archive, um, and anything that they did need to archive could be archived to an online mailbox, so they could still access it wherever they were, and they weren't relying on that, that PST file, which quite often can get accidentally deleted or corrupted. So with the, with the migration process, is the, as I mentioned, is the cutover process, okay, so what this, what this meant was that we we start the process in the background, we copy all of the mail from their on-premise server into the cloud without the users noticing at the time. So we, um, uh, so the users don't notice any, any issues while they're they keep happily using the systems that they're, they're currently using. Once we've moved all the data and it's tested and we know we can access all of the mail in the, in the account, then we do a cutover um, for, the whole, for the whole company. Um, and there is some downtime to be expected through that, just when you cut over the domains. But um, it, uh, it is minimised, as I'll mention a bit later. We do that outside of business hours, so it's really going to minimise the, the downtime on the users. Uh, and then the last process was that each person's user, um, user profile, so Outlook, uh, needed to be reconfigured. Um, and all of their mobile devices. So some of the, some of the challenges that they felt or needed to think about before they, they embarked on the, the migration was around licensing. So, it's really key that there are quite a lot of different combinations for
for Office 365 licenses. Um, and it's not just for the sake of making it complex, it's actually so you only need to pay for specifically what you need to pay. Um, sorry, what you need to use. So they had a couple of uh, mailboxes like sales and accounts, which are shared mailboxes, and they don't need to have a full blown office. They don't need SharePoint, they don't need the link for those particular users. So then they could just pay for a much cheaper license. So doing a plan, so as uh, Brian quickly mentioned about our Office 365 readiness assessment, that's something that we do. We go through and look at, okay, what, do you, what mailboxes do you currently have? What do, they, what do you need in the future? Uh, what do you actually need to pay for right now? And what do you need for to go um, you know, moving forward? The internet link, this is a common challenge with small businesses with the, um, you know, the if a lot of small businesses are using ADSL 2 Plus still, which has a very slow upload speed. So cop copying emails from the on-site on server into the cloud can actually be quite slow. So we, have, we then make sure we, we look at that during the readiness assessment and see if that's going to be a challenge. Now, for this particular customer, that was a challenge because the, um, as I mentioned, ADSL was a very slow upload speed, so it was going to, it's going to extend the, the length of time for the migration. But as I mentioned, the, the users didn't even notice that we're migrating their data in the background, so there was no downtime for the, um, for the actual users. It just meant that the project was just going to stretch out a little bit longer. Um, Another thing to consider with that though is then when you're using Office 365 in the future over that same internet link, is that going to cause a problem with uploading attachments or doing video calls or things like that? When we tested with that, that particular client, there were no issues with that. So it just extended the length of time for the migration, but didn't actually affect the um, you know, ongoing use of the, the product. Mailbox size, uh, they had quite a few sort of executives in the company that had huge mailboxes and then lots of other um, staff members that had small mailboxes. And that's a consideration that large mailboxes with lots of email items, it's going to take a bit longer to, um, to migrate. So we, we did a few tests and made sure we ran that outside of business hours when we were doing those large mailboxes. Oh, sorry mate, just hit no. Oh. Uh, downtime, as I mentioned, with the cutover process, there is some downtime, and that's purely just when you're cutting over the, mic, the, the domains. Um, so we make sure we, we do that outside business hours so that the, the staff don't notice that. There's no loss of data, it just means that it's inaccessible for just for a little while. User profiles, as I mentioned, they, uh, we have to recreate the, the user profiles um, uh, for each of, the, each of the PCs and each of the devices. Um, so the way we get around that is that we can, for the, the um, uh, desktops or laptops, we can script that so it's automatically done. Um, so the staff just needs to put in put in their username and passwords into a secure location and it will already make me do that. Then we can send instructions to the, to the staff about how they redo their phones or maybe their tablets. Uh, but on top of that, because we always come across slight challenges, is that we'll have our, you know, we've got our support team there ready to take questions from people and log onto their machines or help them over the phones if they can, until the whole process is done. So we're not just you know, scripting things and, and give sending instructions and then sort of hands off. No, we're right there along the way, you know, let's, let's help them and make sure they're all, they're all, um, all working. And with the on-site servers, so a lot of small businesses will think that, um, oh, we're moving to the cloud, so I don't need any of these servers anymore. Unfortunately, um, you know, that's not quite true in a lot of instances. So there's a lot of time you'll need a domain controller, a print server, file server, an application server still on site. But with this particular this particular company, um, we were able to put in a new server, which was downside, they didn't need to have the email server requirement. Um, so it was a, a lot cheaper and a lot more reliable um, and was, um, you know, needed a lot less maintenance than, than previously. So moving on to a, a corporate co client uh, in the financial services industry, and you'll notice that the, has the same feature set for Office 365, which is one of the great things, is that um, you can get all the same features as you can with, a, with an enterprise through a small business. And there's also different plans, so if, you're, if your business is under 300 users, then you know, the pr price point is slightly different to those where it's unlimited. Um, so some of the considerations, or the reasons they were migrating was around mobility. Again, they wanted staff to be able to, to um, access files, emails on the road, but also a lot of, they had a big 
uh, bring your own device. So a lot of um, staff are starting to use their own tablets, their own phones. So they want to make sure that um, uh, they can access the emails, files in a secure environment uh, on whatever device they, they use. Again, inconsistent software, so they had lots of different versions of software uh, throughout the company and 365, they were standardised that. Cost of ongoing support, so they had some on-site um, email servers which were becoming complex um, as, they, as they were trying to add, add new servers or upgrade them. Um, they still had to manage the hardware and it was just becoming ex expensive both through um, you know, the cost of, of maintaining and also resources. Um, mailbox sizes, so they had you know, like a five, quite common a five gig mailbox limit with, um, you know, and had challenges with archiving, people archiving the PSDs again. Um, and so going to 365 gave them a 50 gig mailbox plus the online archiving. And compliance. Um, they needed, um, you know, they did security, they needed um, data loss prevention, legal hold, and things like that on their data to make sure that people couldn't uh, easily um, send the data outside the company, uh, or that if they had um, you know, someone left the company, that they could put a legal hold on their mailbox so that that would be kept, um, and they could use that if they needed it in the future. The migration process was very similar to the small business, where it's a, it's a big bang approach. Um, you migrate all of the mail um, in the background. Then once you get to the point where all the mail is copied across, you do a cutover outside business hours again, or sometimes it has little impact on the staff, um, and then reconfigure the, um, uh, you know, the user uh, mailboxes and, um, uh, and devices. Um, just going over the challenges around the, uh, the migration, again, licensing, as I mentioned, part of our Office 365 readiness assessment is looking at all the licenses, um, what's going to be permitted in the environment. Network bandwidth, making sure that there's going to be um, sufficient bandwidth that when we're doing the migration or when we're using 365 in the future, that that's not going to slow down the whole network for everybody else. Mailbox size, again, it's just going to affect the time it takes to, to copy the data across. Downtime, there will be some downtime, but that's minimised again through when we schedule it and, and being prepared. User profiles, again, is, is going to be a scripted process, so the majority of stuff can be um, scripted for the desktops or laptops, and then tablets or smart, uh, smartphones can be uh, either done by the users quite quickly by setting, uh, following a set of instructions, um, or by you know, us helping them over the phone, and again, uh, having our, our services there just to um, you know, uh, to be, uh, be able to take those calls and help people over the phone or, or log in remotely. With their on-site service, so they still had a number of uh, systems, you know, domain controllers, uh, application service, things like that. They still maintain those, but they're able to decommission their their old um, email exchange service. And just moving on to the, to the, uh, the hybrid employment, so this is for a corporate client, um, professional services industry. Um, now, the, the key difference with the, the hybrid is that they're, they're maintaining some of their legacy systems. So in this case, it was uh, Exchange, SharePoint, and um, uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, but it's also linking to the services with, in, in 365 and leveraging the, the power of those as well. So some of their reasons why we're great again were Mobility and bring your own device, uh, mailbox size, archiving, compliance. But the key things that was different here is around, was around legacy systems, as I just mentioned there. They wanted to keep um, they wanted to keep some of their mailboxes on site, so there's some of their service mailboxes, um, and it also had a number of applications which plugged into Exchange, so they didn't they didn't want to completely decommission those. SharePoint they had um, yeah, they made a significant investment in their internal SharePoint system, so they wanted to keep using those, but they also wanted to leverage SharePoint online and uh, Exchange online in the future. And then they already, again, they had a, a fairly heavy investment in, in Office, so they wanted to maintain those while that was still the latest version before they then um, cut over to, uh, to Office 365. But at the same time, any new users that they brought on, they could put them on into the cloud and they could use the latest version of Office there. And I wanted to do a stage migration. So they had a number of different sites. 
with uh, or teams which they wanted to do bit by bit. They didn't want to do a whole big bang approach. So it was uh, they wanted to sort of limit the downtime, limit the impact that it had on you know the whole company. During the migration process, so the big thing about the hybrid is that it's a lot more complex than the cutover method. Um, for this big client, we had to install uh, additional exchange servers. We had to make changes to the domain. We had to do a lot of. There is a lot of preparation that needs to, to, to um, take place to make sure that they're going to in, integrate um, uh, seamlessly. So once that preparation was made, then the uh, mailboxes were moved. So all the data again was copied um, in the background, and then when the cutover occurs, it's essentially seamless. So you don't need to reconfigure the user's mailboxes. There's literally no downtime. Um, so users will basically close out of Outlook, reopen it, and then it'll be connected to Office 365, and you won't actually realise that it's moved from your on-premise uh, or the exchange server in your office to the cloud. However, you suddenly you're going to use uh, you know, the, the cloud features that have been enabled. Uh, some of the challenges uh, around here again was licensing, network bandwidth, um, mailbox size. Downtime is not a challenge there uh, because it's, it's essentially a seamless migration. Uh, user profiles again, don't, don't need to be reconnected. So some of the um, mobile devices would still need to be redirected, uh, reconnected. Um, but as far as you know, Outlook users, then they wouldn't need to be. The, but the biggest challenge is around additional complexity. So, you know, while it does, it did allow them to do stage migration with no downtime and also integrate with the cloud, um, it is a more complex um, scenario and it does require you know, additional maintenance going forward. So that had to be factored into their infrastructure team. Um, that, so that's, that's sort of some three scenarios that we've gone through there. Um, the key thing that I just want to go over again is that um, there can be a lot of things that Considerations going to move into Office 365 and different ways to migrate, but the key thing is to plan it well in advance, and then that should actually reduce a lot of the, the heartache and should actually not have too many challenges with it. So now I will um, hand over to Brian, and uh, he can go through some uh, just some additional key considerations when you're making um, uh, thinking about Office 365 or migrating.